Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. It's great to have you back. And welcome to the final session in Quran story time of Dawood, the Prophet Dawood and Sulaiman alayhi uh, Today's session, uh, inshallah, we will be starting in just a few minutes. But just a reminder, do have yourselves renamed so we can know at least what year group you're in. Um, so we know which age we're dealing with. So if you get a chance, please do rename yourself. And it's great to have you on camera, if you wish. So parents, just to let you know that we are live broadcasting on um, on YouTube as well as uh, recording this session. So if there's a concern about your children being on camera, then no problem. But for the rest of you, please do come on camera. It makes a big difference to us, inshallah. And we have um, we are live on 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 YouTube as well. You can visit our Anur YouTube page. Alhamdulillah. We have uh, quite a few people watching there as well, uh, as well as on Zoom. So it's great to have you all here today. And we'll be starting in a couple of minutes, inshallah. And just a reminder for those who have just joined, then inshallah we'll... Um, and you can let your friends and family know this will be a good time just to get your parents to text your cousins and some of your other people in your class and just let them know that the Quran story time has started. Um, and they can invite their friends and family to all join together, inshallah, so they can all benefit. We'll be starting, inshallah, in a few minutes' time uh, with that session uh, for you all, inshallah. No, they're very, they're very boring today. Nobody's got any cool pictures. Nobody in space. Nobody on the beach. You know, yeah, we have things. I think, I think they're all on half term, like in half term mode. Oh, okay. You scared yeah, we me. We're going to share the pictures with. Uh, uh, I don't know who. Uh, it's it's cool, man. You can just put your cameras on. You can just wave. You can say salams. Don't be afraid, inshallah. Yeah, it's always good fun. And usually, Lukman has something. So, Lukman, where's your? He's, a, he's usually out of space. And then mm. we have some, some tragic people who usually put a Liverpool background on, but obviously they're quiet this week. Maybe Lukman is actually in space at this moment. That's why it's all black. It could, could be. be. It could, could be a black hole. Yeah. Cool. So look, those of you who just joined, welcome. Welcome to the Quran story time. Thank you for being here. And alhamdulillah, we are on the final session of the three-part series of Dawood and Suleiman alayhi salam. Welcome uh, and thank you for being here. Inshallah, we're going to start in a few minutes. Just a reminder, do try and see if you can rename yourself, add, adding your year group so we know which year group you, we're speaking to, inshallah. And also uh, those on YouTube, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, inshallah and we will be uh, we are live streaming so parents uh, just for you to be aware of that if you come off camera or your family comes off camera we are live streaming on youtube inshallah and this is a recorded session so it starts uh, how alhamdulillah we have uh, many people here some people's going to be joining us in the next few minutes and we have uh, maybe half a dozen or so people on youtube as well so welcome back Ustad. we had Ustad Masood yesterday do an amazing session on Suleiman alayhi salam. Yeah, mashallah, through, sounds excellent. Mashallah. Yeah, he went through some of the du'as uh, that the that were mentioned uh, for Suleiman alayhi salam, and he mentioned uh, some of the incidents about what he did and some of the things he didn't mention. But it was interesting, Ustad. We did the Q and A at the end, and yeah. a lot of people got the right answers, even though he hadn't covered some of the story. So that oh, was quite wow. cool. So they got a good. Uh, understanding and background knowledge of the the prophets and messengers which is really it's phenomenal mashallah. such a famous story the prophet of Dawood and Suleiman salam, but there's still so much to learn if we go deeper into the incidents because the things that happen in their life they're so unique you don't really find that with other prophets you know especially today we're going to go into the in a bit more detail in the life of Suleiman alayhi salam, and uh, especially his kingdom which is like nothing else which has ever happened in history or will ever happen. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ himself used to be very careful about uh, not going against the dua of Sulaiman ﷺ. Sulaiman asked for a kingdom that none after him could compare to. So the Prophet ﷺ was very careful not to go beyond that dua and he would remember his brother, the Prophet Sulaiman ﷺ. So I'm so excited about today to talk about his story and then we're going to wrap up talking about both father and son, Dawood and Sulaiman and some of the 
universal lessons we can learn, some of the lessons that we can learn today in our lives, inshallah ta'ala. And I believe today Anas is going to be reciting and he's going to be joining us and he may have already joined us. I don't see him here unless he's uh, unless he's named under something else. But Anas, if you are here, you can raise your virtual hand. Okay, mashallah. He's given me so sent me some messages. So unless he's playing a, a big practical joke on me, he has sent me a message that he's just logging on. So inshallah ta'ala, we look forward to uh, hearing his recitation as well. Now, what about these attendees? Have we got anyone uh, who's being a bit brave and showing us what they're doing today and what they're up to? No, no one yet, Ustad Akhtar, just you and no, me. No, boring, boring. Yeah. Let's, let, let's see some uh, some cool things. Let's see some backgrounds. Uh, let's let's find out what you're up to because it makes our half term a bit more exciting and interesting, you know? Sometimes we get a little bit tired and a bit bored at home and when we see your backgrounds, we, we feel so happy, we feel so excited. Ustad Akhtar, that tree is starting to lose its leaves. It's yeah. the middle of the summer and I was expecting that tree, all the leaves should have grown back. Huh? Yeah, mashallah, mashallah. But speaking of blossoming, here's Anas. Anas has oh, arrived. Mashallah. Ask him to just unmute himself and come on camera. Anas, can you hear us? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Anas, how are you? You okay? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Mashallah, mashallah. Excellent. It's great to see you and hear from you. Uh, again, uh, Anas, inshallah, you're one of our most trusted um, attendees and reciters. And if you think back, you're actually uh, 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 one of the first, if not the first, to recite on our program. So it's great to see you again. Now, Anas, you're going to be reciting uh, for us today. Uh, can you just give us a bit of background? What, what are you going to be reciting? Which surah, which ayat? Um, can I recite from anywhere? Oh, no, no, you can't recite oh. from me. <laughs> right, you're going to be you're reciting. You're going to recite Surah Ikhlas, are you? <laughs> no, no. no, I wasn't told where to recite. <laughs> All right, okay. I'll tell you where to recite then, Anas, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so you're, we're, we, are, we have been speaking about uh, the story of uh, Dawud alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam. So I will tell you which surah to go to and which ayat you're going to be reciting from. But because you're such an expert, you can just, uh, you know, you, you just do it, you know, mashallah. Okay, bismillah. I think we, we have it on the slide as well. And Namal, uh, 27th chapter of the Quran, verse 15 to 26. So if the listeners can uh, follow with us, inshallah, you can either follow in your own mushaf or you can follow on screen, the ayat will be there. Surah An Naml, verse 15 to 26, inshallah. Is that okay, Anas? Yeah, inshallah. Okay, bismillah. From 15 to 26. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا داود وسليمان علما وقال الحمد لله الذي فضلنا على كثير من عباده المؤمنين وورث سليمان داود وقال يا أيها الناس علمنا منطق الطير وأوتينا من كل شيء إن هذا لهو الفضل المبين وحشر لسليمان جنوده من الجن والإنس والطير فهم يوزعون حتى إذا أتوا على واد النمل قالت نملة 
قالت نملة يا أيها النمل دخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون فتبسم ضاحكا من قولها وقال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وقال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأدخلني برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين وتفقد الطير فقال ما لي لا أرى الهدهد أم كان من الغائبين لأعذبنه عذابا شديدا أو لأذبحنه أو لأذبحنه أو ليأتيني بسلطان مبين فمكث غير بعيد فقال أحط بما لم تحط به وجئتك من سبأ بنبأ يقين إني وجدت امرأة تملكهم وأوتيت من كل شيء ولها عرش عظيم وجدتها وقومها يسجدون للشمس من دون الله وزين لهم الشيطان أعمالهم وزين لهم الشيطان أعمالهم فصدهم عن السبيل فهم لا يهتدون ألا يسجدون لله الذي يخرج الخبأ في السماوات والأرض ألا يسجدون لله الذي يخرج الخبأ في السماوات والأرض ويعلم ما تخفون وما تعلنون الله لا إله إلا هو رب العرش العظيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله أنس that was Excellent, mashallah, beautiful. And I really enjoy listening to you, Anas. Mashallah, la quwwata illa billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you in knowledge and khair and increase your uh, barakah in your Quran and in your time. I know you're doing your exams at the moment. So how are your exams going? Alhamdulillah, all right. I've done one paper. I've still got seven left. Yeah. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. These are your exams, correct? Yeah. Wow, it's been quite a difficult time for you in that a lot of your learning was done remotely. Is that correct? Yeah. But did you have to rely on yourself in terms of studying and revising and not really having as much support from your teachers that you'd normally expect? Yeah, definitely. Especially in year 12, the teaching wasn't very good. So then it, in year 13, it kind of just added a lot onto the like, workload. Now, do, would you oh. say that your kind of... Uh, journey in terms of hifd of quran and the independence and relying on yourself and working hard and putting the hours did that help you at all in your exams yeah yeah definitely it's um like the discipline of sitting down for long hours memorizing quran it, it transfers to you also like uh, your studies because when when it gets difficult you just have to keep on working hard mashallah <laughs> Now, I know last Ramadan, um, uh, you were in Masjid Al-Ansar, one of the imams, respected imams, leading Taraweeh. So, mashallah, you know, we've not had many uh, reciters who've come who actually have had that experience already. How was it, like, leading Salah, leading Taraweeh? Alhamdulillah, it was all right. It was my second year. 
uh, last okay. Ramadan. So I did last year as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first time I done it was nerve wracking because um, uh, the idea of a lot of people behind you. It's, yeah. And it's, it's also difficult um, with the intention because you have to make sure you're not doing it for the people. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, it's a big battle. <laughs> Yeah, subhanAllah. And, you know, I, I, I sometimes lead Salah and I know Ustad Akhtar sometimes leads Salah. And even if we know a surah really well, just that feeling of people behind you, all kind of expecting you to read perfectly. Uh, you can start making mistakes in surahs that you've never made a mistake before. Exactly. What advice do you have for us? So we say that again. What advice do you have for us? You know, we get really nervous and uh, we start making mistakes that we've never made before. You know, it's, it's about putting your trust in Allah because you, what happened to me as always well that I'd revise something at home perfectly fine. I read it many times and I know it. And then when I lead, it's like I haven't revised it. But there's there's not really... So you got to do what's on you, you revise it. And after that, you put your trust in Allah because if you can stress in a basket the whole day and reading it, over-reading it, then you're going to end up being more... Um, anxious and stressed out inshallah I mean one question I always ask and I'll make this the last question is how do you balance your commitments because uh, you're doing exams you're studying you've also got to revise your Quran you were fasting as well Uh, so normally when people open their fast that's their time to relax and enjoy and spend time with the family but you guys would be thinking about okay I've got to lead Salah how do you balance all these commitments um, so the last Ramadan especially um, most of it was holiday which helped a lot okay. it was an April holiday and that was around 20 days of Ramadan so without that I don't know how I would have coped but the last 10 days of Ramadan were quite difficult because I'd be in college the whole day studying I get home and do more work then after mm-hmm. that I go revise and I break my fast and then Next thing I know, I, I'm in the masjid praying tarawih, and I got sleep. Wake up the next day, repeat. So it was, yeah, it was quite difficult, but alhamdulillah, we'll pay off, inshallah. Zakhla khair, Ustad Anas. It's been uh, great having you, and uh, very wise words of advice to us all, and your inspiration to all the young people. That inshallah, when you grow older, you can be. Uh, somebody who's an expert in Quran. I know Anas is uh, working towards, already has his ijaza, uh, and he's leading salah, and he's, um, uh, mashallah, you know, studying for his A-level exam. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put barakah uh, you know, in his time and make him sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakla khair, Anas. Okay, Ustad Akhtar, we're going to get back to the story, the story of Suleiman. I can see some characters have come online, Aisha and Maryam, mashallah, uh, looking very concentrated. Afnan, he looks very serious, he's not going to take any nonsense. Mashallah, mashallah. So we're going to today uh, talk in a little bit more detail about the story of the Prophet, Prophet Suleiman, alayhi salam. Now, I know Ustad uh, Mas'ud spoke about some amazing uh, wisdoms from his life and some of the famous incidents from his life. We're going to go into a little bit more detail, starting with when he was young. So if we go to the next slide, Bismillah. Yes, now Sulaiman alayhi salam, he shared a great quality with his father in that he could communicate with the animals. But his communication with animals was to another level. Dawood alayhi salam, when he used to make dhikr in the morning and in the evening, the mountains would resound with the dhikr of Allah and the birds would praise uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. But Sulaiman alayhi salam, he had another level uh, of communication with the animals. He would control armies of animals, birds and jinn, which would all fight as part uh, of his armies when they were uh, moving across the world, spreading the word of Islam. So he now... Uh, has a higher level of control over the animals. Now, when he was young, he was, of course, learning with his father. His father is the great prophet Dawood, alayhi salam. And there was a very famous incident when he was young, which showed that Sulaiman, alayhi salam, had a great future, that he would continue the legacy of his father, Dawood, alayhi salam. One day, two men came 
uh, to Dawood alayhi salam while Sulaiman was sitting next to his father as a young boy. And they came with a dispute, uh, a disagreement. One of them had a field and he had some crops. And the other one, he had a field with some sheep in it. And the guy, the shepherd who had the sheep, his sheep had crossed over to the neighbor's field and eaten up all the crops. So they came to Dawood alayhi salam. And we spoke before that Dawood used to split his day up. And part of his day was to solve the disagreements of his people, to give uh, hukum, to give judgment. It's very important as Muslims that we are in the service of our community. Okay, he was not just, oh, I've got this great kingdom. I'm a brave warrior. I'm just going to live a good life now. He was always at the service of his people. So he gave a judgment that the person whose sheep had crossed over and eaten up the crops, they should give their sheep away now to the neighbor. But then Sulaiman alayhi salam, he came up with an even better solution. And Sulaiman asked permission from his father to give his opinion and said, the one whose sheep crossed over, he has to now temporarily give the sheep to his neighbor who will use the milk and will use the wool. And in the meantime, he will cultivate the field, look after it and help the crops grow back again. And once the crops have grown back again, they will return the sheets, uh, sheep and take their fields back again. So that way you're going back to the original situation and nobody's lost out. So Sulaiman salam showed from a very early age that he has great wisdom and insight and he is going to go even further than his father as a king and as a hakim, as a leader and as a person who gives judgment. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So Sulaiman salam had a tremendous kingdom and we learned about Dawood salam being the first one who had the knowledge of how to mold and weld metal and to make weapons and to make machinery. But uh, Sulaiman salam, his control and his use of resources and using what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the world went even farther. So Sulaiman salam, he had specially trained jinn that would go deep sea diving for corals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the knowledge of how to do this. So these jinn would go deep into the ocean and they would bring out precious pearls and corals from the bed of the ocean. He also had specially trained jinn that would work in uh, deep mines, copper mines. In those days, copper was a lot more valuable than it is now. So these jinn would go into deep mines and extract copper uh, for Sulaiman alayhi salam. So let's move on to the next slide. So now Sulaiman's kingdom was the greatest kingdom, even greater than his father. He had animals in his armies. He had birds. He had jinn which were working for him. And he had tremendous control over them all. But like his father, his main aim was the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we hear this idea of the temple of Sulaiman alayhi salam. This was a place of worship which was built uh, in the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam, uh, which was there to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there would be prayers held there. Now, unfortunately, in modern times, the memory of both Dawood alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam has been changed. So you will actually find some very disturbing things about Dawood alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam uh, in some of the Judo-Christian books. They will describe them as doing some very terrible things. And this is totally not true. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses prophets, he chooses the best human beings like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So as you get older, if you read about Dawood alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam from some Judo-Christian sources, you might find some descriptions of some very terrible sins. But this is not true. This is not accurate. We know the prophets were the best human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. And the prophets were ma'soom. Ma'soom means protected from sins. They will not commit any major sins. Because if they did sins, then people would say, well, what's the point? We might as well do sins as well it's because the prophets are doing it. But they would sometimes make errors. So one of the errors we spoke about, not a sin, but an error, is Dawood alayhi salam. 
when the two men came into his mihrab and one of them spoke about his friend and his brother has taken uh, his one sheep and he has already 99 sheep and Sulaiman alayhi salam gave a judgment. Now, can anybody remember what was the error there? Because it sounds good what uh, Dawood alayhi salam said. He said, oh, you have oppressed uh, your brother and you shouldn't do that. It sounds, sounds right to me. What was the error? It wasn't a sin. It was an error. Anybody know? You can use the text facility or you can. Uh, ah, excellent, Wajiha. They didn't listen to both sides. He has to listen to both sides. Even if you think it's right, you have to listen to both sides of the story. OK. Now, in modern times, uh, there's been uh, an idea that Masjid Al-Aqsa, which we can see a picture of, uh, which is uh, on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, that this should be destroyed and a new place should be built called the Temple of Sulaiman. This is totally, totally, totally wrong. Masjid Al-Aqsa goes back to the beginning of time. In fact, after the Kaaba, uh, was put there and we don't exactly know who put the Kaaba there. It could be the angels. It could be Adam alayhi salam. Uh, 40 years after that, Masjid al-Aqsa was built. So Masjid al-Aqsa goes back to the beginning of time. You can absolutely not destroy Masjid al-Aqsa. And also uh, Masjid al-Aqsa is uh, protected under law. So the idea of destroying Masjid al-Aqsa and building a new place called uh, the Temple of Suleiman. This is something totally, totally wrong. And we as Muslims should speak out against that and we should try our best to prevent that. And one of the best things we can do is actually to go to Masjid Al-Aqsa and to pray there. It has 500 times reward for praying in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Does anybody on this uh, uh, call, anybody who's listening been to Masjid Al-Aqsa? You can either use the chat facility or you can speak. Has anybody been to Masjid Al-Aqsa? Anybody? Yes. Oh, Dawood in year six has been to Masjid Al-Aqsa. That is amazing. Anybody else? Yeah, Fatima's say... raised her hand. Fatima Zahra has raised her hand from year three. Okay, Fatima Zahra. Does anybody want to speak about how they found praying in Masjid Al-Aqsa? Because that's something that we as Muslims from UK it's actually a lot easier for us to go there. So we should definitely, 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 inshallah, try and get go there. Does anybody want to speak about what their experience was like? How did they find praying in Masjid al-Aqsa? Anybody want to speak? Or maybe yeah. you would... Yeah, Fatima yeah. does. Fatima, accept the prompt to come up here. Yeah, Bismillah, Fatima. Tell us about Masjid al-Aqsa. How did you find it? Find it. So it was very fun and very exciting. It was very also different from to other masjids. Wow, mashallah. Can you tell us how it's different? What did you say? Can you tell us how is it different to other masjids? Um, so like like the, also like um birds and animals and that they can come in the masjid like they're free. Oh yeah, that's true, isn't it? Mashallah, mashallah. That's beautiful. And in the courtyard outside, and um, there's lots of children there, so you can play with children outside in the courtyard after the salas. Oh, mashallah! Looks like Fatima was having a great time in Masjid Al Aqsa. We should all definitely go there. Jazakallah khair, Fatima. That's beautiful. And in the middle of the compound, you can see the golden. Uh, that's Qubbat Al Sakhra. That's the dome of the rock. That's not Masjid Al-Aqsa. That's just part of the compound. You can see the masjid, which is in front of that, and it's very large. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide, inshallah. Now, one day, Sulaiman alayhi salam was inspecting his armies. Now, Sulaiman was a strict leader. Okay. You could not just mess around with him. Okay. He was controlling people, jinn, human beings, birds, animals. And he noticed that this small bird, the hoopy bird, was missing and he asked about it and people were wondering where is this hoopy bird and then suddenly this hoopy bird appeared and returned and explained that he had found another kingdom where they did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where they worship the sun okay let's move on and this uh, uh, this these people were the people of Sheba and they were based in Yemen and the Prophet Sulaiman, he used all his power and all his strength 
to make sure that these people who were worshipping the sun and their leader was the Queen of Sheba. He used all his power and strength to make sure that they became Muslim. The, the Prophet Sulaiman, he sent one of the jinns to go and take the throne of Sheba and bring it back to where he was. And he also called the Queen of Sheba to become a Muslim. And when she came and she saw the kingdom of Sulaiman, she understood that Sulaiman was on the straight path. He was the person who was truly worshipping Allah because of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. So it's very important to realize that Sulaiman he wasn't doing what he was doing because he loves to have a lot of money and a lot of gold and copper and diamonds and corals and rubies and pearls. He was doing this all to show to the world that if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you follow Allah's religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. Okay, let's move on. Now, one day, Sulaiman alayhi salam was inspecting the war horses and the horses were so well trained that they would kind of do this movement that you can see the picture where they would be standing and they would raise one leg uh, showing a kind of salute to Sulaiman alayhi salam. And Sulaiman alayhi salam was so impressed that he was stroking the horses that he kind of forgot about his morning and evening adhkar, his du'as that he makes in the morning and evening. Now we spoke on Monday about the importance of the adhkar of morning and evening. And when he realized that he's missed this chance, he decided to slaughter the animals for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you might be a bit shocked, might be a bit shocked, but slaughtering for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something called qurbani. It is something great. And maybe it's a bit hard to understand this lesson, but when you find that there's something from the dunya that's distracting you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you sacrifice that thing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very pleased with you. So maybe you've got a game system, you know, I, I, Ustad Akhtar, what do they play nowadays? I don't even remember the names. When I was young, it was Nintendo. I don't think it's they Pac-Man. play. Pac-Man, Pac-Man, isn't it? Batman. Commodore 64. Commodore 64, Star Doctor. You've taken me back like 30 years. Commodore 64. <laughs> Young people, what do you guys play nowadays? What do you guys play in? Nusaiba is not Let's happening. Ask Afnan. Afnan, what do you play? Roblox. What do you play? Say that again, Afnan. Oh, yes. Roblox. Blah, blah. I got no idea what that is. I'm just going to smile and nod as if I know what it is. PlayStation, yeah. Imagine you're playing PlayStation and the time for Salah or the time for morning and evening dhikr comes and you forgot about it and you carried on playing PlayStation. When you remember, if you now say, right, I'm not going to play PlayStation for a whole week or a whole day just to teach myself a lesson to concentrate and to make the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah, the highest thing, then this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, Nusayba is such a good girl. She only plays on the weekends. She's so disciplined. Now, whenever you sacrifice something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah always replaces it with something better. So Sulaiman alayhi salam had very fast horses. But when he sacrificed them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gave him something that is even faster than horses. Can you guess what that was? Allah gave Sulaiman something even faster than horses when he sacrificed the horses for the sake of Allah. It's a tough question. Ants? No. <laughs> How are ants faster than horses? This picture is, uh, sorry, this picture is not related to my question. What is faster than horses? Burak. Wow. No, Burak is just for the Prophet. ﷺ. Cheetahs. Uh, Suleiman already had cheetahs in his army. Not an animal. Think of something that's not an animal. Think of weather. What's faster than horses and is weather? The wind. Wajiha always gets the answers so quickly, mashallah. Musaiba, excellent wind. Allah gave Sulaiman control over the wind. So whenever you sacrifice something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives you something better. Okay, now uh, one day when Sulaiman was marching with his armies, uh, an ant 
came out of its colony and uh, said to the colony, oh, look, Suleiman is coming and his army will crush you without even realizing. Now, Suleiman, salam, Allah blessed him to be able to hear that. And Allah mentions in Surah uh, An-Naml, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِّنْ قَوْلِهَا He smiled and he smiled in a way in which the Prophet ﷺ would sometimes smile. It's when your mouth is so broad and wide because you're so happy that your teeth can be seen. The prophets never used to kind of laugh out loud and make a lot of noise, but they would smile in this way. And he smiled because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed him, he blessed him with the ability to hear the ants, to hear the language of the animals. And Sulaiman was so happy and so pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. Sulaiman was a shakir, somebody who was very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. Okay, let's move on. Now, towards the end of Sulaiman alayhi salam's life, he was watching all the workers who were constructing uh, a great building. And he was standing, leaning on a staff, watching them very carefully. Now, what they did not realize is that Sulaiman had passed away. He had died, but he was still leaning against the staff. Now, they continued working and working and working until an ant ate the bottom of the staff and the staff collapsed and Sulaiman collapsed. And everybody realized that Sulaiman had passed away and he had passed away sometime before that. Excellent. Hadra and Hafsa know this story. Now, what, do you, what is the main moral of this story? What does this story teach us? What does it teach us? Who knows everything? Who is the only one who knows everything? Anybody got any ideas? You can unmute yourself or you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, he is the only one. Well done, Fatima. Well done, Wajiha, Zaid, Luqman, Hajra and Hafsa. Excellent. Allah is the only one who knows everything. Even the jinn, they used to think they know and that they know everything, but they did not know that Sulaiman alayhi salam had passed away. Excellent Afnan as well. They didn't know that he had passed away. And this was a sign to them that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Okay, let's move on. Yes, let's go to the next slide. A beautiful uh, uh, reminder there. Even if you have a great kingdom, you have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now before Sulaiman passed away, he made a dua. He turned to us, to Allah, and prayed, Lord, forgive me and grant me such power as no one after me will have. You are the Wahhab, the most generous provider. Sulaiman salam's kingdom is the greatest kingdom that ever existed and ha has ever existed since. Any great superpower you see in the world, none of them can match and compare Sulaiman alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that as a sign that he is a great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is quite a different dua. You don't find a dua like this from any of the prophets. One of the reasons is because Sulaiman had already inherited a kingdom from his father, Dawood alayhi salam. And Sulaiman wanted something special. Something special to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him. And his special dua was for a kingdom that nobody before him, even his father Sulaiman, uh, even his father Dawood, uh, or anyone after him, even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, nobody should have a kingdom like Sulaiman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that dua. And inshallah, we've uh, we've gone on quite a long time now, so we're going to stop the story now, uh, Ustad Akhtar, if that's okay. And we're going to rush straight to the quiz. Our yeah, favorite. well, this is, this is, yeah, Jazakallah Khair, Ustad Sahab. Uh, and let's have a look at the quiz questions that we have for you today, inshallah, um, on day three oh, Ustaz, of the... Ustad, Nusayba has a question. Shall we uh, listen to Nusayba's questions first? Sure. Nusayba, do you want to come off mute? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, will the story time happen regularly or is it just for this week? Oh, it's every holiday, Faber. I'm so glad you asked. So every holiday for the first 
three days we do Quran story time and every holiday we cover like a different story. So this uh, uh, holiday we spoke about Dawood and Sulaiman alayhi salam. Last holiday we actually spoke about the, uh, or the last time we did it, we spoke about Ashab al-Kahf, the people of the cave. Ustad Akhtar, do you remember what we're going to, do you know what we're going to cover in the summer holidays? Do you remember? We are still deciding. We're still deciding at the moment. So we've got a few secret options that we don't want to tell everybody. Or they might not, you know, we don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay. So you're going to have to stay tuned for us for that, inshallah. Every summer holidays, right? Yeah, yeah. every holidays and every half term. Okay. Sure. Let's go on to the quote, Mustafa. After. Yeah, let's have a look at the first question for everyone. So the Prophet Muhammad sallam, was given the choice by Allah to live forever as a prophet king or die as a humble prophet. What did he choose? Did he choose A, to live forever, B, live forever as a king, C, die as a humble man, or D, die as a humble prophet? So Tough A, B, C, or D. Tough question to start off with, Ustad Akhtar. I didn't actually speak about that. So now I'm going to test your knowledge on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sira. Tough question. Yeah, good question. And look, those on YouTube, you can type in the chat, A, B, C or D. Uh, we'd love to see your responses. And we'll give you another four or five seconds for everyone just to get your final answers in there as to what you're choosing. A, live forever. B, live forever as a king. C, die as a humble man. Or D... A diet as a humble prophet. And let's have a look at the results of stars. MashaAllah. Excellent. Very good response. The correct answer was D, die as a humble prophet. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his final illness, uh, he was unwell for around just under two weeks. And the Prophet Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to him and offered him, do you want to live forever? And if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose that option, he would have lived forever. But the Prophet chose to die as a humble prophet and not to live forever as a king. Well done, inshallah. Let's move on to the next question. Yes, let's have a look at question number two, which is, what lesson did the Prophet, prophet Dawood learn when the two angels appeared to him as men and asked him to judge between them? Was it A, always listen to both sides of the story before making a decision? Yes. B, always lock your door so people can't break in? C, never get involved if you if people you don't know need your help. Or D, never be a shepherd. So was it A, always listen to both sides. B, always lock your door. C, never get involved if people you don't know need your help. Or D, never be a shepherd. Have a look at answering that for A, B, C and D. Uh, which one of those two? And well done on the last question for those who got it right including um, Sirat Mustaqim, who got the right answer on the last question. But let's have a look at this one and see where you're at. And let's have a look at the results. And Ustad, it is 100% have answered the same answer. Excellent. MashaAllah, this is such an important lesson. Always listen to both sides of a story before making a judgment about who's in the right. That is beautiful. 100% excellent. MashaAllah. Well done, well done. So this, they're doing great here. Let's have a look at question number three. Question number three is this. When the fa two farmers came to the Prophet Dawud and Prophet Suleiman they presented their problem. What was the outcome? What was the result? Was it A, neither of the Prophet could solve their problem? B, Dawud came up with the best solution. C, Prophet Suleiman came up with the only correct solution. Or was it D, that both the Prophet Dawood and the Prophet Suleiman came up with good solutions, but the solution of Prophet Suleiman was better. So was it A, neither Prophet, B, was it Dawood C, was it Suleiman or was it D, they both came up with solutions, but the solution of Suleiman was better. We'll give you another few seconds. And those of you on YouTube as well, please do Put your answer in there for A, B, C, or D. And well done for those who got the right answer on the last question. So have a look and let's close the poll and see what responses we got here or stuff. Okay. Uh, mashallah, mashallah. Excellent. 94% got the right answer. It's that they both came up with solutions, but the solution of the Prophet Sulaiman, it was a better solution. Excellent, mashallah. Yeah, very well done. Well done for all of you and, for, and those on YouTube as well. Well done.
let's have a look at question number four for you. So question number four is when the Prophet Suleiman died, none of the jinns, animals or humans realized. How did they find out? Well, this is a tough question. Was it A, Allah sent down revelation to inform them? B, they could see he was not breathing? C, they checked and could not find a pulse? Or D, an ant ate away the staff of Prophet Suleiman was leaning on against until he collapsed? So was it A, that Allah sent down revelation? B, they could not see him breathing? D, C, they checked for a pulse and could not find one? Or D, was it that the ant ate away at the staff, at the stick of Prophet Suleiman that he was leaning on and eventually it collapsed? A, B, C or D, those of you on YouTube, you can also answer A, B, C or D. Let's have a look at the results, Ustad, and it's excellent results there. Are we, what is it? Oh, excellent. 100 percent, mashallah. Some very good answers today, mashallah. Excellent. Very well done. Everybody got that right. Well done, mashallah. And those of you on YouTube as well, then uh, well done for answering that question correctly. And now let's have a look at the final question for today. And the final question for this series of the Quran story time, which is every prophet has dua which is accepted by Allah. What was the special dua of Prophet Suleiman al-Islam? Was it A, for the greatest kingdom that no other king could ever match? It, match? B, for the people who denied his message to be punished? Or C, for the entire world to become Muslim? Or D, for the temple in Jerusalem to last forever? So was it A, and you can just type, uh, put your answer in, A, for the greatest kingdom that no other king could ever match? B, for the people who denied his message to be punished, C, the entire world to become Muslim, or D, the temple in Jerusalem, Jerusalem to last forever. Give me another two seconds to answer your question, and let's have a look at the, start, start the results here. Oh, it's a bit lower to uh, this it time. Uh, the correct answer is actually A, for the greatest kingdom that no other king could ever match. Um, for the entire world to become Muslim, that would be something that Sulaiman wanted to happen, but he knew that was in the hands of Allah. For the temple in Jerusalem to last forever, uh, we, we don't uh, know that from anything that we've read or that the Prophet Muhammad uh, has taught us. So the correct answer is that he wanted uh, a great, the greatest kingdom that ever lasted. And he especially wanted that uh, as a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him. And he had something different to his father because his father also had a great kingdom. Uh, okay, mashallah, that's us well, done with the quizzes. Yeah, well done, well done, everyone. And look, there's a, a question that we'd just like all of you guys to fill in in the survey as to how beneficial, how did you find these sessions? We are back in the next holiday period for another Quran story time, so do keep yeah, an eye out. And wait, wait there, Zaid, before you get excited about trying to come off mute. And inshallah, we'll uh, we will be seeing you all very soon. But thank you, Ustad Sahal. And, Ustad Masood for, for having these sessions, mashallah, with us. And thank you all for attending and being phenomenal and, and, and enjoying these sessions and sharing it with everyone. And now we get uh, well, we get the opportunity for you to come off mute and say your salam. So this is your time, Zaid, and, and everyone else, inshallah. Assalamualaikum.